Welcome back. Historically black or predominantly black institutions have been safe spaces for students of color for centuries. And although black people are no longer barred from attending certain universities, places like Martin University still play a major role in helping students find themselves and their voices. News 8's Katira Winfrey explains in tonight's We Stand Together report. When Martin University opened in 1977, outside its walls, America was in the middle of an ongoing fight for civil rights. Nearly 45 years later, that fight continues. Sean Huddleston is the university president. He said when it opened, students began transferring here from predominantly white universities where they felt they didn't belong and the impact of segregation. This campus became a safe place. Institutions of higher education has always been a place where been places where several civil discourse uh, and intellectual debate happens, right? Uh, at minority serving institutions, HBCUs and predominantly black institutions, it really is the strengthening and unification of voices to address issues that have been longstanding and pervasive and cause inequities. So we take the protests that are happening around the country, for example, and so uh, the mantra and focus is on Black Lives Matter, and absolutely it should be there. These are happening because black people are being brutally and unjustly murdered, and so we're focused now on people understanding that the mortality of black people in this country is valid and important and should matter to everyone. But the other side of that is the livelihoods of black people. And so black lives matter, but black livelihood matters as well. And that's making sure that black people have the opportunity to thrive and succeed in this country and in society just like everybody else. But in order to do that, we absolutely have to, to address the inequities, those things that make people, black people in particular, not start from the same line as everybody else. So black lives matter, black livelihoods matter too. And to hear you say that again, it takes me back to the governor citing that same quotation from you. Um, what do you say to people in power to behoove them or encourage them to, to also open their eyes and look at that statement and try to do something to make that a reality? I, I think that uh, people in power, uh, I think that they focus on equality. They really fundamentally believe that everyone should have the same opportunities. But to get to equality, we've got to address equity issues first. Right. So the assumption that people are starting from the same point um, and therefore you use the same treatments on the issues based on the fact that there's this kind of uh, standard starting point is an inaccurate assumption. We've got to address the inequities in order to get to that point of equality. So people who do have the opportunity, the authority, um, the ownership and the authorship to be able to make change occur, they've got to do, they've got to take a strong focus on helping to close those gaps by eradicating the barriers that cause those gaps in the first place. And the university sits in a predominantly black neighborhood or what would be considered a lower income neighborhood. Talk about how that played into who Martin University is and the works you all do outside of education. Sure. Uh, so I will say that fundamentally Martin University is a come university. That means that we are in of and for the community. Martindale Brightwood is where we sit and we focus our attention here. Uh, this, as you uh, indicated, is one of the more disadvantaged neighborhoods in the area. But there are many neighborhoods in central Indiana that are like uh, Martindale Brightwood. So our goal is to try to not address, not just address the changes that need to occur here, but also create models that other neighborhoods like Martindale Brightwood can follow. So to be a come university means that we have to see ourselves as an anchor institution for this area and areas like this that help to address issues like poverty and health disparities uh, and unemployment and other things through uh, the access to education, but also congregating and aggregating resources and support and voices that can help address all of those other things so that we can pull many levers to solve and eradicate those, those equity gaps that exist. 
New conversation and in January, the university is launching its Center for Racial Equity and Inclusion. If you'd like to see this or any of our other in-depth stories in our We Stand Together series, you can find them right now on our website, wishtv.com.